Among the scientific experiments left behind on the moon by the crew was the seismometer, which got its first real workout after Conrad and Bean had rejoined God, uh, uh, Gordon in the um, command module, and the limb was slammed back into the moon. Well, the crash of the limb on the moon created a series of reverberations that lasted at least a half an hour. I think I heard later longer than that. And all of this has puzzled the scientists at the Manned Spacecraft Center. NBC News correspondent John Dancy is now going to discuss that part of the flight with Dr. Gary Latham of Lamont Laboratory and there at our center in Houston. John? Frank, I guess uh, Dr. Latham has been puzzling over that. Dr. Latham, you, what, what sort of theory have you come up with for those reverberations? John, it might be interesting first to take a quick look at that reverberation, which has us all rather mystified. The signal began over here. You can see it build up very gradually over a period of about seven minutes, and then decrease very slowly over a period of about 55 minutes total duration. The signal appears just as a black line, but it actually corresponds to motion of the lunar surface of the order of perhaps one millionth of an inch, a little less than that. Well, now, I guess what everybody is asking, what all the scientists are asking, is why did it do that? It doesn't do that on Earth. It does not do that on Earth. That, that, of that we're certain. It certainly is outside the range of our experience here on Earth. And uh, uh, we, we were extremely amazed as it rolled in that it uh, lasted so long, that it took so long to build up and have been examining every possible and, and uh, for the most part, improbable hypothesis for the structure which would do that. Uh, one possibility is that it's not lunar structure at all, but that it triggered a landslide. Mm -hmm. The duration of a landslide that would do this, however, is, is, uh, has to be so long, it seems to us, as to be improbable also. About the best we can do at this point, and, and a hypothesis which I've sketched here, is that we trapped energy in a debris or rubble layer which exists beneath the Maori region between the impact and the seismometer location. Now we're looking at this from the side as you would see a cutaway view of the moon. Here I've shown the impact location with seismic energy radiating outward and on the top a layer which I've called solid which is the Maori material you see at the surface of the moon a layer of debris which has presumably been ejected from the huge Imbrium impact, which uh, geologists consider occurred many, many millions of years ago, and another solid layer below, which is hypothetical but believed to exist, also solid. Energy which was formed here would have been trapped in this layer, according to our hypothesis, and would have bounced up and down in this fashion, as shown by this a line and reverberated within that layer very much as a, within an echo chamber. The seismometer at this location would have recorded that signal and its reverberation for a very, very long time. Now the difficulty with that and, and, the, and the aspect of it which is so mystifying is that on Earth such materials have very, very low Q. That is, they, they tend to damp seismic energy very, very rapidly whereas this material appears to propagate seismic energy in a manner which would, uh, which would take almost a pure quartz crystal. Our feeling now is that we're going to have to reassess our understanding of the nature in which waves are damped and to study the, the way in which fluids and solids entrapped within the material affect such damping. Why, I, I don't think it's, we've, we've quite gotten to the, to the point of why this would happen this way on the moon and not on Earth. Earth. Well, the peculiar uh, structural uh, features that we run into here are not, uh, have at least not very uh, frequent counterparts on Earth. I can, in my experience, uh, think of a place where we would find a solid over a thick rubble layer underlain by another solid material. That's the first uh, aspect of it. And if we did, we would certainly not obtain a signal of this character at all. Have you ever seen a signal like this on one of your uh, seismographs? I've seen, seen signals of this sort, John, uh, when we're recording explosions in oceans as recorded on hydrophones. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, and that's about the only place I've seen such signals. Does, does, does this phenomenon have anything to do with the fact that uh, there is a vacuum on the moon? 
We feel that it, it very likely does. The mechanism of attenuation, or the way in which seismic energy is damped, is not well understood. Maybe we can, maybe we can hold this up again, just to, to illustrate how long this went on. Now, what is the difference between this sort of a, this sort of a wave or diagram and what you would normally get on Earth? First of all, this is one hour in duration. On Earth, we would see a very sharp, large arrival in this area. Mm -hmm. The biggest arrival on the record, very likely, would have occurred right here when we first saw energy. Then a quiescent period, and then a large wave which propagates along the surface of the body. And the whole signal would have probably lasted a minute, something like a minute, one sixtieth of the signal we've seen here. You, you were talking about you were talking about the the fact that you have a hard vacuum uh, on the moon, what, what effect does that have? Well, it means that there is uh, almost complete absence of fluids and gases within the material. And we have little experience here on Earth uh, with, that, with media of that nature. Certainly the, flu the, the materials we're dealing with in uh, propagation of seismic waves in the Earth uh, are, contain a great deal of such materials gases and fluids, and uh, we now feel that this must be responsible for the way in which waves are damped as they propagate. I think we're going to, we have here evidence that uh, uh, that will be of fundamental value to the study of, of media and the way in which they react to seismic waves uh, in hard vacuum, in contrast to the presence of such fluids. Dr. Latham, we've, you've, you've got a lot of mysteries out of Apollo 11, and now you have a new one out of 12. Thank you very much. Thank you. Frank? Thank you. That's what they wanted. That's why they slammed the limb into it, to see what it would do. And now that they have uh, some readings, they're not quite sure what it says yet, but they must have time to study these things and come up with some hypotheses, if not absolute answers. I, I expect they'll be poring over those things for many, many months. Oh, we'll be back in just a moment, still anticipating that telephone call from President Nixon. Now here is a word from golf. 